Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by today. And today I'm in Luminar Neo looking at the upcoming version 1.19.0 and specifically the luminosity masking function because it's awesome. I love it. I'm so excited to have luminosity masking in Luminar. I've been waiting and waiting. It's here uh, or it's here in a couple of days, I should say. And I hope you're as excited as I am. I do find it to be the most flexible, powerful, and really useful masking technique. So in this video, I'm going to be walking through uh, how it works, talk about what it is, kind of where and how I use it, why I use it, uh, and of course, demonstrate how to get the most out of it. So let's hit it. Shot from Iceland. Surprise. Uh, I was there with the Luminar team. Um, this was last year, and there was a beautiful sunset, and it's Iceland, and it's it's... It's nuts. Uh, anyway, uh, luminosity masks. So these are masks based on light values. So uh, light values are the midtones, the highlights, the shadows, all that kind of stuff. And so the reason I like luminosity masks are because you can target fairly specific tonal air. In fact, very specific tonal areas, highlights, midtone, shadows. But the thing I like the most about it really is you can also fade whatever you've targeted with the mask, fade that in so it blends together really nicely. So this is really important because uh, you get halos or fringing if you have like a big difference in one area versus another. This can help you overcome those kind of things because it's blending your edit across a smoother kind of wider area. It's essentially like having a gradient. Um, and so that fade is super important because it allows you to do these gentle kind of subtle adjustments that blend nicely so you don't get those halos around edges and things like that. It's just incredibly, incredibly powerful. So what I want to do is add some color to this photo. It was a sunset. I want to bump it up because, hey, I like color. It's a sunset and that's the photo we got. Um, you can do this two ways, by the way. You can make your adjustments and then go apply luminosity mask. Totally fine. It works just great. Or you can create a luminosity mask and then go apply your adjustment. Same result, doesn't matter. I'm gonna make the mask first because what I wanna do is talk about what it is and how you make them. So I just made one, although you can't tell, but what happens is it goes in, it calculates the light values, it figures out what all the different tonal areas are, and then it makes a mask, and the mask is currently covering the entire photo. You just can't see it. So you've got this section here where this represents shadows on the far left, and it uh, represents highlights on the far right. And then all the various shades of gray in between are the different tonal areas that range between shadows through the midtones into the highlights. Now, the cool thing is, is this is adjustable, of course. And so what you do is you have these two little bars on the end. And all you do is you grab a bar. And as soon as you grab it and start moving it, you'll see that the red overlay, which represents your mask, which is currently covering the entire photo, the red overlay is activated and starts showing because as soon as I start sliding this, you're going to see what's happening is that red is changing and it's really, it's going away. And the reason why is because this is the shadows, this left side represents shadows. And what I'm doing is I'm dragging this bar to define or create my mask to make it specific. And as I drag it, because I'm dragging from the shadows and away from the shadows, the mask is disappearing from the shadows. And so my mask is now, as you can see, being applied only to the, the kind of in-between shadow and mid-tone area and then all the way up to the highlights, which is kind of obvious if you look at it. The highlights are going to mostly be in the sky and some of the water. I'm covering that really well. So if that's where I wanted my color to go, hey, I got it, and that was pretty easy. Now, the opposite is also true. You can come from the highlight side and drag it this way, and it just does the opposite thing. It just says, hey, Oh, you don't want the red in the in the bright parts? Cool, it's gone, which means my edits will not apply to wherever uh, the red is gone from. I should rephrase that to make it simpler. The edits will apply wherever the red is, right? And so what I'm telling it now by dragging it away from the highlights is don't cover any of the highlights. And now I moved it so far that I'm saying don't really cover the midtones either. Don't cover those. Just cover the darker parts with whatever edit I'm about to make. And so that's what I'm telling it now. So that's how you define your mask. You basically grab the bars from either side and squish them to the middle, drag them to the middle to create the mask. And you start isolating tonal values or tonal areas. And you can see that I'm in the darker areas uh, in two ways, right? Um, number one, you know that the darker areas are in the ground, not the sky. But more importantly, you can see over here that my luminosity mask is really far to the left. So I'm mostly covering the darker areas. 
here's a cool thing. Once you've compressed those, and you can compress it from both sides at the same time and adjust that, and you can see it's changing the mask every time. So the red is where my edit is going to go. So I can compress it from both sides or just a single side, and I can also grab this and drag it around to just basically readdress different tonal areas. So I could do this if I wanted to. I can do that. It doesn't matter. I have the flexibility to customize it the way I want, which is what I like about it so much. So that's important. But the other thing that's important, I talked about this at the beginning, it's great for feathering and fading, which means you won't get halos and fringing and all these kind of annoying things around your edges of you know different tonal areas where adjustments have uh, been applied. And so to create that fade or that feather effect, that's what these little triangles are for. These are your best buddies when you're using a luminosity mask. I use it 99.9% .9 of the time. It's very rare that I would not use these little triangles and create a nice generous fade. Because this fade, if you've seen any of my videos ever about any kind of masking, I'm very big on a gradient. And that's a gradient is going to be that transition zone from where you get 100% of the edit to where you transition and fade or feather into no edit. The broader the transition or gradient zone, the smoother the edit blends between the different areas of the photo, which means it's less noticeable to your viewer, right? And so if uh, you grab these triangles, that's your way to start creating this gradient or this fade. And that's what's so great about it. So I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to start dragging it to the left. Now, this is towards the shadows. So if you look at the shadows, you can see some of the darker areas are starting to get more and more of that pink, right, or red. And you can see what it's doing. It's not fully covering all this area, and that's because I have told the luminosity mask or luminar that, hey, this is the tonal area uh, boundary, if you will, but I want you to fade all the way to the shadows, right? And so that's why it's not fully covered. If I drag it like that, it's fully covered because there is no fade. But what I want to do is I want to pull this back and I had isolated some of that area. And then this fade is going to say, hey, you're, you're stopping the mask, kind of. You're kind of stopping the mask wherever this is. But by dragging this triangle and creating that fade, I'm creating that generous transition zone or gradient area. And for me, I want to get a little bit more out of the shadows because I care a lot more about it being in the brighter parts. Now, of course, the opposite is true as well, which is you can drag the triangle from the right hand side in order to fade it into more and more of the brighter parts. So if you notice, I'm starting to get more and more pink in those brighter areas. But even going all the way up here, it's not 100% pink in the sky. And that's because the this bar right here is the one that says cover the mask 100%. That's basically what you're doing. You're saying inside this little area that I've now compressed, I want 100% of those tones to be covered, and then I want to fade it to the highlights, to the right, and I want to fade it to the shadows to the uh, to the left. Well, in this case, I want the fade uh, to, it doesn't have to be as generous because I want more of those highlights to be covered. So maybe I want something like that. And by the way, even after you faded it, you can still move it around like this and do those kind of things. And you can drag this and you can reconnect it down there and it's kind of gone away from fading into the highlights because it's now just covering 100% of the highlights because that triangle area is gone. It's been compressed back into the body of this main section here. But I want to get a little bit of a fade and I want to drag that and I got to grab it with my mouse and I'm going to get a nice little fade there. And there we go. I have a really nice looking luminosity mask and it's covering the bright parts of the image, but it's fading from the really bright ones into the kind of semi-bright. And then it's 100% in these areas. And then from the shadows, it's fading into the middle, mid-tone, shadowy kind of area, which is here, right? kind of between shadows and mid-tones. So I've got a nice, generous fade there. And in fact, I could maybe make that a little bit uh, larger if I wanted, if I could get a hold of this thing. And you can see it starts creeping back into the grass. Because maybe what I'm going to do, in fact, it is what I'm going to do, I'm going to amp up the colors of the sunset, you know, surprise. Um, and in doing so, I want a little bit of that color, a little bit of that light to be hitting the grass and that sort of thing because it would pick up some of the colors of the sunset. So maybe I want it to be like that. I just don't want a lot of color and saturation in all the grass. So now I got a light it's it's like kissing it just barely it's a whisper of that color hitting some of these darker areas and the majority of it hitting the brighter areas which is how i've defined it here in the luminosity mask 
So that was a lot of talk, but that's how it works. You can, of course, always hit reset if you need to, but that's how it works. So now I've got a mask in place that's, you know, pretty nice fade into the bright parts, really well covering the, the midtones, which is a lot of the sky, and then fading into the shadows. And then I can just come in here and do the things I want to do. Maybe I want a little bit more brilliance, want a little bit more warmth. Maybe I want the split color warmth to go a little higher on the warm tones. And you can see it's it's impacting more of the bright stuff. It's not really impacting the ground. Uh, also, maybe in the highlights, I want to add a little bit of red, maybe a little bit of magenta because it is a sunset and I want to amp up those colors. And maybe even in the midtones, I will drop into that and get a little bit of red there as well. And there you go. I've just amped up that sunset but I did it in a really smooth and kind of gentle and kind of subtle way. It's vibrant and it's colorful, but it's not hitting the entire photo at 100%. It's hitting some parts at 100% and it fades into the other parts. So you get this really smooth overall transition that to me, it is vibrant and colorful, but to me that looks natural. It doesn't look like I just dragged the saturation slider to the right, which is often what uh, people do to bump up colors. It's a normal thing to do, especially if you're early on in your editing journey. You see saturation, like, yeah, I want a vibrant sunset. Boom, drag saturation. Doesn't really work so well because you don't take control over where the color is applied. And every color getting saturated doesn't really look good on most photos. So here, I've left the grasses pretty much the way they are, but I bumped up the sunset with just a tiny, tiny little bit coming into the grass. And so that is why I love luminosity masks because they work so well at doing that kind of thing for you. And you get these beautiful, vibrant results without overdoing it because remember the way our mask looks and I can click on masking and I can go into the uh, actions and click on show. The way my mask looks is it's not 100% here. It's fully red there, but it's less red here. So you're getting uh, a, a transitional zone on all the different tonal areas across the areas that are covered by the mask, right? So I have a little bit on these sheep and a little bit on the grass, a little bit more in the water fading over here into the darker parts of the water, which makes sense because guess what? You don't expect the darker bluer water to be totally orangey yellow for a sunset, but you would expect it over here where you're already seeing some of that color. And so you're getting a nice little kind of kiss of that color across the water and down here where it's brighter because the mask was heavier, if you will, uh, in the brighter parts, you're getting more of it here and less of it down here. So it's really, it's just a really intelligent way to edit a photo. Now I'm using color here, but you can do this with detail. You can do this with light. I could come in with something like develop and we're going to make this up. I wasn't really planning to do this, but say you want to add a little bit, bit of drama and maybe you play with the highlights and the shadows and, and you bounce those around a little bit and maybe you come up with something like that. Feels a little heavy handed, right? If you look at the before and the after, it's a little too much. So this is another way to kind of check your editing habits, which is make your edit, walk away. If you come back, it's too saturated, too contrasty or whatever. You don't necessarily have to fiddle with the sliders. You could come in with a luminosity mask and go and create that and then just say, all right, I want to kind of re, uh, redo what I did. So maybe I want to apply this just to a tight area in kind of the midtones, which covers a fair amount of the photo. But hey, I like to fade things because otherwise these adjustments are pretty abrupt, especially like right in there. You can see it's red and then it's not red at all. Uh, it fades a little bit over here in some of these darker areas. But by taking this slider, you can see the pink is starting to creep into that area, which tells me I'm getting a nice kind of gentle fade. And so this is something I do a lot is come in to just the midtones and I keep a pretty tight uh, midtone tonal selection, if you will, but with a generous fade. And so that generous fade is going to ensure it's smooth, but I'm really only covering 100% of the photo in a pretty narrow tonal area. And so now if I go look at my edit, it doesn't look as over the top, even though I made a 51 in contrast and I bumped up shadows and pulled down highlights, the overall look before and after a little bit more gentle because it's targeted with the luminosity mask. So you can use this with any and, and every tool that allows masking. Some don't, right? Like um, water enhancer, there's no masking. It just selects water automatically. Uh, vignette, I think there's not one, but like mystical is a tool that I love. So maybe you come in and you're like, Ooh, I love that. I love that kind of, I don't know, mystical kind of look, but Hey, it's too much. And so, you know, I like it in some of the midtones 
and a little bit of the highlights, but not really the shadows. Okay, great. Luminosity mask is perfect for that. So I don't like it in the shadows. It makes it too dark. Let's get it out of the shadows. Let's just take it out of those shadows and let's make a fairly tight tonal area up here and maybe fade that a little bit into some of the midtones and maybe pull it back a little bit with a little bit of fade. And you know, I'm experimenting here and just kind of playing around. And of course, every photo is gonna be different. The point is you can take things like this, make a pretty broad selection, but have a gentle and kind of compressed tonal area, maybe a little bit more in the center to the more the midtones. So maybe something more like that. And then my application of mystical is not as heavy handed. That's still probably a little too much in the highlights. You get the point though, you can play around with that so that your overall application of a tool is not overdone and you can just control where it goes so that you're targeted, uh, so that your edits are a lot more targeted and controlled. And that, my friends, is the sign of a well-edited photo is you didn't just drag sliders to the right and let the software do what it does, which is whatever you're telling it to do, right? It'll do whatever you tell it to do when you drag a slider to the right. But when you control it with a luminosity mask or any masking tool really, but in this case with a luminosity mask, you can really control the tonal areas. You can get really targeted and specific. So it's great for light and detail and color, even though it was mostly color here. And you can see we had a huge impact on the photo, right? Before and after. Um, you can control all the different aspects of what you need to control, light, detail, and color with luminosity mask. That's just the way you do it. And also one other question uh, that I've received is, hey, does this work on black and white photos? Sure, absolutely. You're not playing with color. You're probably playing with detail. You're definitely playing with light. Same thing. You can make a black and white photo and then still go target edits to the different tonal areas because that's all the photo is. It's different tonal areas kind of put together. And a black and white, you're just not distracted by all the visual sugar rush that you get from colors like this. So absolutely, luminosity mask will work on monochrome photos as well. And hopefully that gives you some ideas about this tool and what you can expect from it and the kind of fun you can have with it. Hope you're as excited as I am. It's coming here in just a couple of days. I'll be back soon with more videos, my friends. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, adios.